Lent, and welcome to the online worship services for Island Creek United Methodist Church, Mount Plains United Methodist Church, and Fanta Gap United Methodist Church, if you'll join with me in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the chance to worship you yet again. We ask that you be with those around us in our communities and all around the world, as it seems that COVID might have a little bit more planned for us than we had wanted. And we ask that you be with those affected by it in all ways. And we ask that you be with those that need you in ways that we don't even know. In your son's name we pray. Amen. The scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 30. Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. Also, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, Go, sell your possessions, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astounded and said, Then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or fields, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our lives, we all have something that if we are asked to give it up, we would struggle to do so. For me, I suspect that it would be my movie collection. Ask anyone who knows me and they will tell you that I love movies. I began my collection in earnest shortly after my father passed away. Since then, it has grown from a few VHS tapes to over 1,000 DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4K discs. Needless to say, I well and truly love movies. Every time I moved, I would carefully take them down from their alphabetized shelf and pack them into their boxes and then place them back on their shelf at the next place I went. For nearly 25 years, I have done this. But if I had to give it up, I would. 
or most certainly I would try. When the young man in the scriptures went to Jesus asking his questions, he probably wasn't expecting the answer that he received. He had followed the commandments given to the people by God in the days of the Exodus. He had followed the rules and laws of the temple. So what was left that he needed to do to have eternal life? Jesus, as we know, tells him that he must give it all up. He must put aside all his earthly belongings and trappings to be able to live the life that he seeks. Even more than that, he must give away the money that he makes from selling them. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Verse 22. We don't know what happened to the young man after that. We don't even really know what he was grieving. Was he grieving that he must give up his possessions? Or was he grieving that he could not give up his possessions and so he would not seek the eternal life that he asked of so passionately? Either way, it is clear that he did not like the answer that he received. What follows is Jesus explaining his answer to the disciples, explaining why he spoke the words that he did. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. I'll be honest with you. I never felt more reliant on God than I did my first year of seminary. When I had a budget of a little more than $900 a month. I imagine I'm not the only one here who's had to make some hard choices when it comes to money. One thing is for sure, I have never looked at ramen quite the same way again. But like the mana from God, it still filled my belly. In our world today, we are very much a society that is focused on possessions. I have this, but I want that. He has that, so I want it too. We dream of one day winning the lottery and what we would do with the money. Our lives are focused on how much money we make and what we can do with it. And even if we have money, we want nothing more than more money. The richest man in the world is a Frenchman named Bernard Allnott, who this week is worth an estimated 200 billion, with the B, dollars. That is a lot of money. But the scriptures tell us that in the end, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if you are the richest person in the world or the person living on the streets but not even two pennies to rub together. I often recall the scriptures of the poor widow in Mark 12 who gave all she had, two copper coins. She gave more than any rich person did. But it was not just money or things that the followers of Jesus had to leave behind. The disciples in particular left behind not only their jobs, but their homes and their families. That, I dare say, is even harder to leave behind than anything money could buy. In seminary, we are reminded that we are to put God first above all else even ourselves. To be a follower of Jesus is to live a life of servanthood. 
This the disciples learned the hard way, and, well, we will too. Money is money. People are people. But God is and always will be God. When faced with the impossible, that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God, Jesus offers this word of teaching. For mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. When we are faced with a request from God, how will we respond? Sometimes when God asks us something, we say no. We run away in the complete opposite direction. We, like the young rich man, go away grieving because we don't like the answer to the question we asked. We, like the disciples, stop and wonder how we can do something that seems so impossible. But sometimes we don't say no. Sometimes we say yes. We give up what God asks us to give up. We do what God asks us to do. Is it easy? No. Is it simple? Hardly. <laughs> but is it what we are supposed to do? Yes. What is something that God has asked you to leave behind? What is something that God has asked you to do? Have you done it? Have you left it on the side of the road you travel? It could be money. It could be a bad habit. It could be quite anything, frankly. If asked to leave it, could you? If you are asked to do something, have you set aside time to do it? Is it something as simple as spending more time with God during the week? Or is it something harder? Is it something that seems absolutely impossible? God wouldn't ask something of you if it wasn't important. I've often heard a phrase, and quite frankly, it isn't one that I like. I'm sure you've heard it before. God doesn't give you more than you can handle. I hate that phrase because that phrase implies that God gave you the hardship that you are facing. That couldn't be farther from the truth. God doesn't give you your hardship, but God will see you through it. If God asks you to leave something behind, you should. No matter how hard it may be. I left the theater behind me to go to seminary. And as hard as that was, I am thankful today. If God asks you to do something, you should do it. Here in these verses, we have a young man who, chances are, probably didn't do what Jesus told him to do. In our scriptures, we have disciples who at times did what Jesus asked and other times they didn't. But in the end, they did what was asked of them because it was important, because it was asked of them. Today, what is it that God is asking of you? 
If you are standing at a crossroad trying to decide, I urge you to follow God. I ask you, please listen to the quiet or sometimes very, very loud voice of the Father. Don't let society tell you what to do. Don't let me tell you what to do. Do what God wants you to do. What is it? Only you and God know. And please, listen, not to me, but to him. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray that we all have the courage to listen. To listen to what you ask of us. Because, at least in my case, I know how hard it seems it would be. But in the end, if we follow what you ask, it's so much better. It's better to do what you want us to do because you don't want us to face hardship. You want us to be able to worship you, to be able to truly know who you are. And I pray that in the moments when it matters most, we listen for your voice and we listen to your request and listen to your orders. In your son's name we pray. Amen.